Welcome to the World Brief. The content of the briefing includes. With a new leader, Poland prepares for a course change in Europe. Yokohama advances to Asian Champions League round of 16 in Kevin Muscat's last game as coach. Predatory lending schemes are exploding across Asia. China's CGN halts funding for UK's Hinkley Point nuclear plant. Armenia and Azerbaijan exchange POWs in line with agreement announced last week. With a new leader, Poland prepares for a course change in Europe. New York Times. Poland's new prime minister, Donald Tusk, is expected to push for increased support for Ukraine and a stronger stance against Russia's military aggression, as part of his country's assertive foreign policy. In a speech to the Polish parliament, Tusk criticized Western politicians who are tired of the situation in Ukraine and promised Poland's full involvement with Ukraine in this cruel conflict with the Russian aggressor. Tusk's election as prime minister marks a significant change of direction for Poland, following the end of an eight-year rule by the conservative nationalist party, Law and Justice. This could help to counter the rise of Ukraine fatigue across Europe and counter efforts by Hungary's prime minister, Viktor Orban, to block further military and economic aid for Ukraine. Orban, who has met with President Putin and relies on Russian energy supplies, has met with Putin to discuss military and economic aid to Ukraine. Law and justice officials had previously clashed with the European bloc, and Poland's support for Ukraine had diminished ahead of last month's general election. Yokohama advances to Asian Champions League round of 16 in Kevin Muscat's last game as coach. Associated Press. Yokohama F. Marinos of Japan secured a 3-0 victory over Shandong Taishan of China, advancing to the round of 16 in the Asian Champions League. Yokohama finished as the Group G winner, ahead of Shandong, and the eliminated Incheon United of South Korea. The win marked the final game for Yokohama coach Kevin Muscat, who led the team to the Japanese title in 2022. The 10 group winners and 6 best second-place teams will advance to the knockout round. Predatory lending schemes are exploding across Asia. Bloomberg. Organized crime groups from China are working with local partners in India to operate predatory lending apps that skim users out of money, according to experts. The scammers often advertise quick personal loans on social media accompanied by fake customer testimonials and convince users to download an app. Once the app is downloaded, the scammers gain access to users' contact lists and photo rolls and use this information to pressure users into paying large sums of money. In some cases, borrowers who have paid off their loan continue to receive threats demanding more money. China's CGN halts funding for UK's Hinkley Point nuclear plant. Bloomberg. China General Nuclear Power Corporation, CGN, has halted funding for the Hinkley Point C nuclear station in the UK, putting pressure on Électricité de France, EDF, to pay for its completion alone. CGN has skipped several installments in recent months, and it remains unclear whether the funding halt is temporary or permanent. EDF has warned there is a high probability that CGN will stop funding the project this quarter. The estimated cost of the Hinkley Point C plant has risen from £18 billion, $23 billion, in 2016 to £32.7 billion more recently, due to inflation and overruns. Armenia and Azerbaijan exchange POWs in line with agreement announced last week. Associated Press. Armenia and Azerbaijan have exchanged prisoners of war as part of an agreement announced last week, which also outlined plans for a peace treaty. Azerbaijan brought back two servicemen, while 32 soldiers returned to Armenia. Last September, Azerbaijan launched a military campaign in the separatist region of Nagorno-Karabakh, resulting in the displacement of the majority of the 120,000 residents. The joint statement from the two countries last week expressed a desire to achieve peace and normalize relations. European Council President Charles Michel hailed the agreement as a major breakthrough and called for a peace deal to be finalized as soon as possible. The Netherlands, South Korea step up strategic partnership including cooperation on semiconductors. Associated Press. The Netherlands and South Korea have agreed to enhance cooperation in the field of semiconductor chips as part of a strategic partnership, according to Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte. The announcement followed a meeting between Rutte and South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol during Yoon's state visit to the Netherlands. The two countries also vowed to increase collaboration in digital technologies, including artificial intelligence, mobile communications and quantum research. A military court convicts Tunisian opposition activist Chima Issa of undermining security. Associated Press. A military court in Tunisia has handed a suspended one-year prison sentence to opposition activist Chima Issa, finding her guilty of undermining state security. Issa, a leader in a coalition of parties opposed to President Kais Saeed, 
was investigated by public prosecutors after criticizing authorities on Tunisia's most prominent radio station in February. She was jailed from February to July. The charges against Issa included spreading fake news and attempting to incite the military to disobey orders and undermine public security. Human rights group Amnesty International has called for the conviction to be quashed. EU unblocks billions for Hungary even though its leader threatens to veto Ukraine aid. Associated Press. The European Union, EU, has decided to grant Hungary access to 10.2 billion euros of frozen funds, stating that the country has addressed concerns over its justice reforms. The European Commission, EC, had previously blocked the funds due to concerns over democratic backsliding in the country. The release of the funds will be a relief to Hungary's struggling economy, which narrowly avoided a fourth consecutive quarter of contraction in September. However, the EC has warned that it may block funds again if Hungary fails to address any potential issues. New EU gig worker rules will sort out who should get the benefits of full-time employees. Associated Press. The European Union, EU, has given provisional approval to rules that aim to improve working conditions for gig economy workers who deliver food and offer rides through smartphone apps. The rules determine who should receive the benefits of full-time employees and restrict the use of algorithms by online platforms to manage their workers. The Platform Worker Directive, which has been years in the making, aims to boost protections and benefits for gig economy workers while increasing accountability and transparency for apps that rely on independent contractors. The rules still need to be ratified and transposed into local laws by member states, which will have two years to do so. Sports Illustrated swimsuit rookie Nina Cash, 57, says posing for magazine is a pinch-me moment, I was an associate dean and now I'm posing in bikinis. Yahoo! Nina Cash has become a swimsuit model at 57 after applying to Sports Illustrated's annual open casting call for its swimsuit issue. Cash, who describes the news as a pinch-me moment, said she was encouraged to apply after seeing the success of Kathy Jacobs, who became the oldest rookie in 2021 at age 57. Cash said she hopes to serve as inspiration to others who feel like age or ethnicity might hold them back with their dreams, adding we could still be sexy, we could still be beautiful in our own way. Well, 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 my dear viewers, what a diverse array of news stories we have today. From international politics to sports and even a heartwarming story of a swimsuit model breaking barriers, there's something for everyone. First, let's talk about Poland's new prime minister, Donald Tusk. It seems he's ready to shake things up and take a stronger stance against Russia's military aggression. Good for him. It's about time someone stood up to those bully tactics. And let's not forget the importance of supporting Ukraine in this conflict. Tusk's election marks a change of direction for Poland, and it couldn't come at a better time. Now, on to some sports news. Yokohama F. Marinos of Japan secured a victory in the Asian Champions League. And it was their coach's last game. Talk about going out on a high note. Kevin Muscat led the team to the Japanese title in 2022, and now he can add this achievement to his resume. Congratulations to him and the team. But it's not all celebrations and victories today. We have some disturbing news about predatory lending schemes in Asia. It seems that organized crime groups from China are teaming up with local partners in India to scam people out of their hard-earned money. It's a despicable act, and we must remain vigilant and cautious when it comes to financial matters. Remember, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Speaking of financial matters, there's trouble brewing with the Hinkley Point C nuclear station in the UK. China General Nuclear Power Corporation, CGN, has halted funding for the project, leaving Electricité de France, EDF, in a bit of a bind. Will they be able to complete it on their own? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, the estimated cost of the project has skyrocketed. It's a lesson in the importance of careful planning and budgeting. Now, let's shift our attention to Armenia and Azerbaijan. These two countries have exchanged prisoners of war and are working towards a peace treaty. This is a significant step forward in resolving the conflict that has caused so much suffering and displacement. It's heartening to see leaders coming together and prioritizing peace. Let's hope they can finalize a deal soon and bring stability to the region. Moving on, we have a strategic partnership between the Netherlands and South Korea. They're enhancing cooperation in the field of semiconductor chips and digital technologies. Ah, the wonders of technology. It's amazing how two countries can come together and work towards advancing these industries. Who knows what innovations we'll see in the future. And finally, let's end on a positive note. Nina Cash, a 57-year-old woman, has become a swimsuit model for Sports Illustrated. Talk about breaking barriers and defying expectations. Age and ethnicity should never hold us back from pursuing our dreams. 
Cash is a shining example of how we can still be sexy and beautiful in our own unique ways. Bravo to her. Well, my dear viewers, that's all the news we have for today. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. Now, I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions or comments? Don't be shy, let's have a lively discussion. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.